Hello, in this series we're looking at making low poly landscapes and low poly work. This course is part of a much bigger course where you can go from beginner right through to advanced. Check that out on gabbit.co.uk. Also, if you need to discuss and chat and work through problems, then you can try out the Discord server. You can chat to people like myself and there's lots of other helpful people on there as well. And lastly, if you want to support me, I've got a Patreon account and all these links are in the description. So carrying on from where we were before. So let's see how we can create water. I'll move these to the side slightly and we'll have water spouting out at the end here. So obviously I click with my cursor in the middle there. That's the only thing about the cursor. It's a little bit tricky to get it in exactly the right place, but it doesn't matter too much. And there's obviously a few ways you can do the water, but I'm gonna use a plane. So Shift A, Mesh Plane. I'm going to scale it into the pipe, so scale by the Y axis. There we go, let's move it across a bit see what that's looking like grab it in the Y again and move it in position that's great let's go into edit mode and I'll move this edge back into place there we go and I'll move this so we're gonna have a curve coming down here about there I think so let's go into side view in fact it's front view isn't it front view so we're looking at the side of it and that's one on my numpad it will either be one or three, depending on which view you're looking at. And let's go to wireframe so we can see that. There's my plane there, and I've got my edge selected here. So we can extrude that out and just keep pressing E. And then it will come out like that. Press set again, and you can see I've got this nice curve and some water. Now, if we want to make this solid, there's an easy way to do that. It's to go up to the modifiers, Let's go into object mode for this. So tab into object mode, add modifier, and then solidify. Just there. And you can see instantly it makes it solid, and you can change the thickness here. And that's how I created my water. And at any point I can extend the end, and it will keep that solid water coming. If you do have any problems with this, then you may have to reset the scale in object mode by pressing Control A and reset scale. Okay, so let's make something slightly more complex like the water tower. So I'll do that over here. So with a water tower, it's a great idea to get a reference image. So if I go into Google and type in water tower old, then you can get these sort of traditional looking water towers and you can see some quirky looking ones as well to give you some ideas. That one's a great one. Reference images for low poly work are absolutely vital because you want to use iconic designs where possible. And so you've got a shape to go by. And then you can break it down. You can think, right, there's a cone on the top and that can be a separate object. There's a cylinder there. We can extend the cylinder out and give it a curve at the bottom. Or you could start with a sphere and then extend it up and extrude it up. And then we can add these bits as separate objects. So let's go back into Blender. Shift A, I'll start with a cylinder. Could just as easily start with a sphere. Go into edit mode, face mode with control tab. Select the bottom face extrude it out and scale it in. Extrude, scale, extrude, scale. Didn't bring that one down, there we go. And we've got our sort of cylinder looking thing. I think this middle section could do with pushing out a bit. So we'll Alt right click on one of these lines to select the face loop and scale that out a bit. And there we go, it's got a bit of a better angle now. The top's a bit big, so we'll bring that down and we've got our basic shape. So back into edit mode, I'll click on the top here, Shift A and add a cone. Let's move that into position. Let's go to top view for that. Grab, move it into position there. Back to side view, move it into position. Okay, let's scale it up. Scale it by the Z. And that's nice and straightforward. Let's look at our reference image again. It's got this sort of middle bit here, it's got a little ball at the top. So there's all things we can do. I went very simplistic on mine and just did some legs and then did this sort of supporting structure in the middle. I'll show you a couple of ways of doing those. So left click to put your cursor where you want your object to go. Shift A, mesh, cylinder, and then we'll scale this right down. So you've got the right width, scale in the Z, and then put them into position. We can have straight legs or they can stick out by rotating them, bring them out, but obviously go to the other side as well, rotate and bring it out. And then we've got our sort of structure there. And obviously I need to go into top view to get that perfect. So grab and pull it in. 
And there we go. Sometimes they overlap, that's absolutely fine. It's uh, stylized with low poly. Does that work like our reference image where we need the sort of support here and maybe a support in the middle like this one? So what I'm going to do to get that support is with this object, go into edit mode. I'm going to select this edge loop here. I'm going to make it a separate object, but I'm going to duplicate it first. So shift D to duplicate and then P to separate the selection. Now I should have a separate object sitting on top of that one. So back into object mode and can you see I've got two objects there. Now with this one, I can scale it in the Z, bring it down into position, scale it outwards by pressing shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z. And there we go, we've got this sort of support or walkway or whatever you might want to call it. I can also go into edit mode with this, select them all and extrude and scale them in, but press shift Z so it doesn't go in the Z axis. And now you can see there's a slight problem because it's all gone dark. And that means the normals are all facing the wrong way. That often happens when you have a flat surface and you extrude it one way. You extrude the normals inwards. So they're all pointing inwards and it thinks this is the back of the face rather than the front. It's easy to solve. You just press A to select everything, go up to shading and UV and recalculate. And that usually fixes it. If there's one stubborn one that's going the wrong way, you just select that one stubborn one and say flip direction. And you can see it's gone dark there. So that's quite handy if you want to mimic the shape of an object. Rather than inserting a new cylinder and cutting it up, you can just take faces from an old one. Now another useful tip is going to be to copy this. Let's go to top view and we want to repeat that round here. Now you can add an array modifier if you had loads of these legs. But I'm not going to go into that. I think that's a bit too complicated for what we want here. Just going to rotate it slightly so it's pointing in the middle a bit more. There we go. Back to top view. Z on the keyboard to go to wireframe. And I'm going to put my cursor in the center. So I'm introducing a new tool, which is this tool down here. At the moment, we're using the origins or the median point, which is kind of the origin or the middle of our object as our pivot point. So if I rotate this now, it rotates around the origin. I'll just right click to undo that. But if I change this then to the 3D cursor and rotate, it rotates around the 3D cursor. I right click to undo that. So Shift D, R to rotate, I can move it around. Select both of them now, Shift D, R to rotate, and they can go around the other side. About there actually is a bit more even. Should have spread them out a bit better. And there we go, using the cursor as your pivot point. Remember to turn it back to a medium point, which is the usual. Now let's say I've, I wanted to make them a bit thinner. I can select them all and then go to individual origins and then scale them, but press Shift Z twice and then that will scale in their specific Shift Z twice, sorry, and it will s and then I can scale them and make them thicker or thinner by their individual origins and shift Z twice is their local Z axis. So for this one example, I press S to scale and I press the Z axis, it's the global Z axis. If I press scale ZZ, it's the local. So it's been rotated, but it still knows that the Z axis is that way for this object. Kind of handy when you're working in this way. Okay, there's a couple of bits still to do for our water tower. Shift A, mesh cylinder, scale that down scale in the Z and there's our sort of pipe work and shift D and I'll scale that down and then we've got sort of a thing at the top there into top view five on the numpad Z to go to wireframe so we can position this in the right place about there scale that up a little bit and there's the lower one and I'll put that into place as well Okay, so that's a simple water tower. That needs to come down a bit, doesn't it? There we go. It could have a ball at the top, like some of them had, some of them had that, that's fine. So at this point, you may find your scenes getting fairly full of different objects. This has a fair bit of detail in it. So what you can do is either group your objects together. I don't find the grouping tools in Blender that great, so I'm gonna give you two options. You can find all your objects in the outliner. Let's box select them all deselect the lamp and you can see there are all these objects here and I can make all these part of the cone by just clicking on these little triangles here and pull them up onto the cone and you can see the cone has now got all these things if I press that little plus 
then they're all part of that cone. So I can just select the cone, move it, I can scale it, and it will select all the other things. I could also go into them individually and scale them individually. And I can move them back out of the parent by just clicking away and dragging. But that does bring it back to where it was. So I'm going to undo that and keep them together. That's one way. I'm going to undo all that. The other way, which is probably quicker, but it's more destructive, so there's no going back from it, is to select them all. I just circled select that time. And press Control J, and that will join them into one object. Now they are all one object, so I've gone into edit mode, and you can see they're all one object. I can still select by hovering over an area and pressing L. Do remember that you have to deselect and then press L with A and then L. And that's how I can select different areas and therefore color different areas as well. This is often a technique I use when I'm doing low poly just because it's quite quick and easy. And I can always select an area by pressing L and then pressing P if I want to separate it out again. But it is destructive in the sense that they have all become one object. So it gets a bit fiddly if you want to make individual changes. So it's something to do towards the end of your model. And of course, alternatively, there's the parenting method up here. Now this is all one object. What do I do if I want to separate the colors within my object? Well, let's go over to Cycles, which I prefer, and let's go to our Material Editor. Let's add a new material, and we'll just make this sort of dark red or something. And let's go to Material Mode so we can see it. So we've got one material on this object, and it's assigned to all of it. Now if I create another material, let's say I want this to be a sort of metallic grey, I can click the plus sign up here, so it's now got a new material ID. There's one there and there's a new one here, and I can assign a new material to that. So let's create a new material and make that a sort of greyish colour by bringing the tone down, and it's sort of a greyish blue there. Now if I want this selection to be to use this material, I can press Assign because they're selected, and you can see that that's now assigned a colour to that. So I can go round and get these other legs by pressing L. Sometimes you have to press L a few times because it doesn't know which area you're over. And then press Assign. That material is now assigned to that area. And then if I want to create a different material completely for this one, I can create a new material in there and we'll give this, I don't know, some sort of other colour. A green, just for now. Select this link by pressing L and then assign. So you can see the same object can have different colours through material IDs. Don't get confused between the plus here and the plus here. This is for adding new material IDs and this is for selecting the actual material that that ID has. That will make more sense the more you use this. So that completes part two. Hopefully you're enjoying the course and you should be able to complete those sections. In the next episode, we'll find out about Boolean operations and we'll work on texturing and lighting. Thanks for watching.